All this opening has been shot with the GoPro Hero 7. Uh, this particular sequence is using the time warp set to 10 times normal speed. And the stabilisation is really good. Uh, but that's by the by, more about that later. We're actually on our way to uh, Judy Woods in Bradford. One of the ideas today is to compare an HDR image made up of five exposures with a normal single exposure image to see if there's any noticeable difference in dynamic range when the scene is low in contrast. The advantage to HDR photography is to increase the dynamic range by merging multiple images together when the scene has both very bright and very dark areas. But is it still worth it when the scene is flatter or lower in contrast? Yes, hello and uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, my name is Mike Walker and today I'm in Judy Woods in Bradford. A beautiful little woodside area. Little streams running through it. It's a little bit overcast. But uh, I thought I'd come out. I haven't been out for a while. Uh, do a new video for 2019, the first one. And I just felt like a nice little amble through a nice quiet wooded area. So here we are at Judy Woods in Bradford. Um, I found a composition that looks really nice. A uh, little stream running down. I think I'll do a, um, an HDR image. I'm going to do five images. So I'm just setting up the HDR now. And using the GH5, I want a nice slow shooting speed. So I'm going to try F11. Do a two second delay on the shutter to stop any movement as I touch the camera. There we are, that's the first image. Yeah, let's try a little bit wider. Get around F11. I'm going to focus right in the middle of the frame for this one, where the point of interest would be. And off we go. Image one. I captured five images in the HDR sequence at one stop intervals in camera raw. The middle image being the correct exposure and this is the one I'll process in Lightroom to see if there's any noticeable difference between that and the final HDR image made up from the five merged pictures. For busy scenes like this where there's lots of detail, there'll be many different framing possibilities within that same scene. And if you have a versatile zoom lens, you could be kept quite busy without actually moving the camera. It only takes a few seconds to scan the whole area to make sure you haven't missed a possible good shot. Here at the bottom of the stream was an interesting image of a fallen branch, looking really good up against the cascading water in the background. I think that's about it for today. Well, I've enjoyed that and we'll go back to the studio, into Lightroom and see what uh, we can do with these images. The light's going now, uh, it's getting on for 4 o'clock, 20 to 4 and uh, I think that's about it for today. Well here we are, uh, back in the studio, uh, Lightroom opened with the five images uh, from the first bracketed picture which, which we're going to use an as an example to see if it's worth using HDR in a low contrast scene, um, which is what this was. Uh, it was a cloudy day, there was no great massive highlights and no great shadows, it was a fairly low contrasting scene in the, in the woodland there. So is it worth doing an HDR image under those circumstances? Hopefully this, um, this experiment might give us a clue to what the answer might be. So we've got five images uh, in Lightroom open. Uh, we'll start with the first one. Um, these are all F11 ISO 100. The only difference is the shutter speed between the five images. Uh, and the five images, the first one's two stops underexposed. The second one's one stop underexposed. The third one is correctly exposed, the fourth one is one stop overexposed and the fifth one is two stops overexposed uh, with the third one being the correct one. So you've got two stops either side. Um, so let's look at the first one, there it is. 
and you can see it's, it's uh, a little bit underexposed. And then that one uh, is uh, 0.4 of a second. This one is uh, 0.8 of a second. Uh, fifth one is 1.6 seconds. And the fifth one is 3.2 seconds exposure. So um, that's the range. Um, now what I'm going to do is merge these five pictures. So holding shift and selecting all five, right clicking and going to photo merge. And I'm doing, doing this on Lightroom. So I'm photo merging uh, on HDR. The red highlights show where there's movement between the five images. And obviously the water's moving. So we've got uh, highlights there. Uh, and this leaf may have been blowing in the breeze a little bit, so we can see what has moved from everything else is the same. So I'm going to click on Merge, I'll merge, merge those together and see how that looks. Just takes a few seconds to uh, align all the images, merge them, and then we can go back into um, the different modules in Lightroom to adjust the settings. So there we are, the, the um, the image has popped up at the bottom there, that's the one. So that's our HDR image. Uh, and we'll just compare that with image 3. And you can see there's very, very little difference, um, if any. You're very, very, very close. Um, I can't see a difference. But what we'll do now is we will... Uh, do some modifications, uh, the usual Lightroom processing. Um, I'm going to drop the highlights, and bring up the shadows a little bit, and bring up the whites to the maximum, which is about there, blacks to there, contrast up to 10, uh, clarity again I'm going to go to 10. We just put a little bit of D haze about there. Vibrancy 20. Saturation just a little bit. 5, 6. Um, I think it's a little bit, I think we could just warm it up slightly. So I'm going to go to um, the preset cloudy and that's just warmed it up a little bit. Everything else really, I'm not going to do too much with the image. Tone curve, I'm not going to bother with that. Detail will just add a little bit of sharpening, go to about 64. Let's just mask so we're not sharpening the whole image. It wants to be just the white areas are affected, so I'm going to go to about the 82. Uh, just add a little bit of noise reduction, 15 is fine. And I think that's about it. Maybe I'll just um, remove chromatic aberrations and uh, that's it really. I'm happy with that. So that is the final image. Now all I'm going to do is copy all those settings onto image number three and see if I can see a difference. So I'm copying all the things that I've done on that image. I'm going to select image three and then I'm going to paste those same settings. And there we are. So this is where we can decide whether we think it's worth doing an HDR image in a low contrasty environment. And looking at that, I would say to me, they look almost identical. Um, but last year when I did an HDR uh, in a very contrasty uh, scene, which was um, on a very, very sunny day, and the sun was out, the shadows were hard, there was a definite difference between the two images. Uh, the HDR image looked far better. Uh, but it was a high contrast environment, so it, you would expect it to look better. So the point I'm making is it worth doing an HDR image in a low contrast scene. And looking at this, it's a personal choice, but I, I wouldn't bother. I'd just use a single image, correctly exposed, and shoot raw, obviously shoot raw. And you've got a lot more latitude in what you can do with the image. That's my conclusion, and uh, I'll just leave you to look at the two images 
Um, I know it's difficult on YouTube, um, because it, but I will be uploading this in a, as a 4K image, so you can get um, as much detail on it as, 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 uh, as, as I can give you, and uh, see what you think. Thanks for stopping with us. Hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. I certainly have. Uh, I've learned not to bother taking an HDR image in a low contrasting scene. Uh, I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, it's a lot of trouble to do an HDR image. Probably twice as much work in processing those images as not processing those images. So that type of environment, the two images look almost identical. So uh, that's it. Um, thanks for stopping with us. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't already given me a thumbs up, uh, please do so. Leave a comment if you like. Uh, my next video is planned in a, about a week's time about the um, GoPro Hero 7, which I've had since November. So I've had a bit of experience with it and um, it's got its good points and its bad points. I'll go through the main three functions of it, which is the time lapse, the video and the picture function. So I'll have some examples for you and you can have a look at those and see what you think. Okay, thanks very much once again, and I'll see you in the next one.